Hello, I made a uh, TTF to bitmap file conversion. I just got it working to a usable state, but I need to add some more compatibility stuff and refactoring in the whole mojo. So this is a make file. Uh, pretty simple. And this is me making it. Really simple. And as you can see, T2B, get a help. These are all the help things. Um, so let's use it. Uh, I got a font here called perfect.ttf. I stole it from the internet and it's basically DOS. This is what it looks like in the TTF format. So if I run using these options, you can see input, output, and they're the only two required arguments. So I'll do TT, uh, T2B dash i perfect dot ttf and I'll call it perfect dot ppm because I just got it working ppm was the easiest to just write without a library or nothing so there we go I forgot my dot o dash o this is because verbose is on by default because I'm debugging and I don't want to type dash v every time but as you can see, it's a lot of stuff going on. It's all in software, so it's kind of slow in the long run. But as you can see, we got a PPM file right down in the bottom right. So if I open up GIMP and open it, you can see there it is. Pretty nice. Current downsides that I need to be worked on is we got fat characters. Uh, you can see this I, for example, and uh, H, you know, you go back here, there's our I, what the heck happened, you know, there's our H, it's a little bit, the slash looks terrible, the other issue is um, resolution, so the resolution is kind of hilarious, and there's currently one option I have to fix that, so we can regenerate it, and we can do dash F for the source font size I think the defaults like 24 so we can up it to something higher like 64 colors are the same sorry it's not F it's S we can also increase the cell size the default one is 30 so I will increase it to 48 now if we open it up again You can see it looks a little cleaner and such. If I go down here, you can look at the D. It's little corners all weird. Here, it's a little bit fixed, you know? Only downside with this method, though, is you got a lot of extra pixels you don't need. So a lot of work to still be done, but I'm happy I got it to where it can be used properly. Um, some bonus features. You can set the foreground and background. So here's foreground. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, FF. FF is there in case you're doing a PNG file or something and alpha is important. And background, we'll do zero, zero, FF, FF, FF. I have no idea what this is going to look like, but it will change the colors. Oh, shoot. Oh, that's kind of cool. I didn't think that color scheme would look as cool as it does. But it's very nice in case you're going extremely old or something. And instead of an alpha channel, you're strictly doing, like, omit a color. I thought of Wolfenstein, so. Yeah. And let's see here. Uh, so... Unicode doesn't work yet because I'm not too familiar how Unicode works yet. I know the maximum value of a Unicode character is 65536. However, for my research, it doesn't use all those values. And if I did use all those values, that would be a very big file even if it were compressed. Uh, verbose, that's on by default right now, but I got to turn it off. And this prints out basically in text format the details of the image like the whole width the whole height 
and the rows and columns and the size of each little sub image and this overwrites rows and columns and yeah we got the full text version as well I want to test out the rows and columns though because I haven't actually tested it gee why did I choose oh grid I'll use the long format though just to show it off all right, so it will check if you do something that it can't fit in. Like if I do four times four, it's going to be like, cannot fit the ASCII into the provided rows and columns, you dimwit. So basically, if you multiply them together and it's greater than 256, it can do it. So 16 times 16 is that. Let's do 24 times 8, or sorry, x8. Uh, I can't math. 26. Oh, I can't math. I can't math. There we go. Alright, I haven't tested this yet, so I hope it works. It should, though. Ah, very nice. So now it's more vertical looking. So, that's it. Basically, the to do I have written uh, in here. Uh writing proper files as opposed to ppm scaling and preventing fat characters outer gap yeah, i forgot to mention that um by default just writing them like this so strictly you can see there's like a one pixel gap between everything uh so there's two pixels here because the actual things like that and that's the whole image right there but um you know, I don't know if that's good or bad to do. I did it because it would make it easier for another project I'm working on. But the best solution overall, I think, is to add a simple argument for that. And uh, let's see here. And Unicode. Again, I'm not too familiar with how Unicode works. So I'm playing it safe and not messing with that for now. And... Uh, Yeah, that's pretty much it. If you don't know what a PPM file is, uh, I can NVim into it. Perfect. PPM. Yeah, it's literally just a text document with all the data. This is the width of the image, the height of the image, the maximum channel value, and then it's literally just in order. What value, 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 what value yeah, all the way down until all the spots are filled up. I'm sorry. Yes, this is a big image. You can see that PPMs, as nice as they are to write, I can show you the code that looks like to write them. Dot C. As you can see, like this is all you need to write that whole image. It's pretty nice. You don't need any API or library. You just create a file, write, write those things I said, width, height, and then the maximum channel value. And then there you go. But the downside is, is like you saw, um, you can see here the biggest file in this whole directory is right here that is 11 million bytes that is insane for just a text or a text document essentially so that's the next most important step uh, priority is probably BMP PNG and JPEG I probably don't need JPEG but there's a library that can probably handle all that info for me and before you know it you can get Targa files so I don't know I'm gonna find what library to use and that's basically what I got so far uh, I hope you thought this project is cool and if you want me to go over the code more I can thank you